We're at the Clark's Fork Fish Hatchery. This is one of 10 facilities around the state managed by the Game and Fish. We raise fish for stocking around the state. We've got fish of just about every life cycle right now. So right here we have some kokanee salmon that are just hatching out into fry. And if you look real close, you can see a mixture of eggs and fry in the jar. So if you look at those fish, you can see the yolk sac hanging down off their belly. That's what feeds those fish for the first probably two weeks of their life. The live fish end up in this aluminum trough where we can clean them up. And I got these eggs from the tent sleep hatchery. We'll go over to a couple troughs over. These eggs are about two weeks behind these other kokanee salmon. So these kokanee salmon hatched out about two weeks ago. And you can see they're laying on the bottom of the trough. That's what they will do for the first week or two of their life they'll lay down there and absorb that yolk sac and grow until they can start actively swimming up and looking for food. Once they start swimming up and looking for food then we'll start feeding them in these aluminum troughs. Once they get up to a bigger fish then we'll drop them down into our, our fiberglass trough. If we move on down the hatchery we'll see a little bit bigger fish there are four species of cutthroat trout that are native to Wyoming. The Bear River, the Snake River, the Yellowstone, and the Colorado River. So we have three of those species here right now. These are the Bear River cutthroats. Bear River is down southwest Wyoming. The brood stock is at Wigwam. Wigwam is a rearing station. They have minimal hatching ability. So we hatch fish and raise them for them. Then we'll transfer these fish to them in October. So you can see these are swimming up off the bottom of the trough right now. They're starting to look for food and we're within a day or so of actively starting to feed these fish. There's a little bit of a timing trick to getting fish on feed. You can look at the fish and see if there's about 70 or 80 percent of them swimming up looking for food or you can look at the fish, uh, put them in a glass jar and look at their belly and see if their yolk sac is absorbed and that seam starts to close up and that's about when you want to start feeding the fish. So, but by experience, I know these fish are within a day or so of going on feed. If we step right over here, we have a, another species of cutthroat, is the Snake River cutthroat. So these fish are going to the Tillet Rearing Station in December. These fish have been on feed for about a week or two now. They're swimming around really well. Their belly is starting to fill out where they look more like a normal fish instead of just a little thin thing. Then as they grow a little bit better and longer, we'll drop them down into our fiberglass troughs and start feeding them and rearing them in there. So over here in this fiberglass trough, we have uh, Eagle Lake rainbows. So these Eagle Lake rainbows are slated to go into lakes next summer. It takes us from about April of this year till May or June of next year to get them up to an eight inch fish, which is what we consider a catchable fish. Some of these will also go out a little earlier than that as a sub-catchable fish. Catchable fish is about an eight inch fish. Sub-catchable is like a six or seven inch fish. So if we move on down, we have two circulars that we raise fish in. Right now we have Yellowstone cutthroats. We are in the Yellowstone cutthroat drainage. These Yellowstone cutthroats are native to this drainage. One thing that's unique here is these lights that we have here. We're probably one of the first trout hatcheries in North America to get these full spectrum LED lights. We initially got these to try and save energy. When we were looking into that, these came into light as an option. They mimic the full sunlight and we have program boxes here that we can manage that light and so it will gradually ramp up in the morning just like the sun would come up and then in the evening it will gradually dim down to zero and uh, that way it mimics the natural sunlight. We try and time it so when we feed the fish we uh, have what we call a stimulus period. 
where the lights go up to 100% and that indicates to the fish that it's time to eat and it's uh, supposed to train them that their times to eat and it makes them grow a little better. So these fish in these two circulars, since we're trying to advance these, we have the lights come on on these two circulars at 3 in the morning and then they go off at 11 at night. And in between we have automatic feeders will feed these fish 20 times a day. As opposed to our fish in the rest of the hatchery, we feed six times a day. We get a little better growth with them by doing that, but we'll have a very limited capacity of what we can do with that. So if we go on outside, we can look at some fish out there. All right, from uh, raising the fish up in the hatchery, we bring them outside here at about 300 per pound. The fish, once we move them out here, will we'll feed these fish anywhere from four times a day down to two times a day, depending on the size of the fish. So the real small fish over there will feed four times a day. Smaller fish need more feedings to, to raise them up. But once we get up to these big fish right here, these only require feeding twice a day. We do all our feeding here by hand. Uh, we weigh out a predetermined amount of food per day and then we split it up into the different feedings to figure out what we're going to feed and then we come out with just a scoop and throw it in. One of the reasons we do that is the fish grow better that way. You have more uniform size for the fish because they all get an opportunity to eat. So you can see there's a lot of room right now. We've stocked most of our fish for the summer and so we have a lot of empty raceways right now but in the springtime when we're full up we have most all, everything out here full of fish to start out with with these things we keep the shades over these to give them try and give them a little sense of security out here give them a place to hide out that's up away from our tail and that just trains the fish to utilize the space better. If we didn't put these on they would tend to bunch up clear down at the bottom and we'd have problems uh, with the fish. They would be easily accessible to predators getting them. Uh, we do have herons, ospreys, mink, raccoons and probably a few other things that predate on these things. Over Behind us over here are some other Eagle Lake rainbows. These will also be going to the Tillet rearing station. So if you look over here, you can see fall rainbows. Fall rainbows are spawned in the fall. That brood stock is at the Boulder rearing station. And then they ship their eggs to Tent Sleep and Tent Sleep incubates those eggs for us and we receive the eyed eggs from Tent Sleep in November. Uh, so we got these fish as eggs last November and then we'll be stocking them out in October. So it takes not quite a year to get them up to the size that we want. We stock fish all over the state but we try and cover locally as well. Over on this side though, we have our Eagle Lake rainbows. These are catchable fish that I was talking about earlier. The brood stock is held at the Story Fish Hatchery and then they incubate those eggs and then they ship those eggs to us in the springtime. And then we raise them up, hatch them out and raise them on up from there. So you might wonder how we load some of these fish. If you look over there, you can see one of our medium-sized stocking trucks. And if you plan further over, you can see uh, a gizmo over there. It has a white pipe coming up. It has a funnel shape on top. That is a fish pump. So when we're stocking our big bunches of fish out with our tandem truck, but our tandem truck has 2,000 gallon tanks on it. So each one of those tanks could hold up to 2,000 pounds of fish. We don't want to load that many fish with our backs. That's hard on us. It's also hard on fish. So we use that fish pump and we set that up down at the end of the raceway. And what we can do is we can crowd those fish down to that very end. And then that we get the fish pump going. The fish pump will suck water and fish up to the top of the tower. Water will separate from the fish and then the fish will go down the tube into the truck and load the truck and then there's built-in scales on the truck that we can weigh how many fish, how many pounds of fish we're putting on that truck to estimate how many fish that we're loading into that truck for that day. And then once we're loaded up and it only takes maybe 15-20 minutes to load a truck doing that. It's 
it's rather quick. Then they can get on the road and go to their body of water. All 10 hatcheries work together to coordinate who is stocking what fish in what body of water. The Spees hatchery is a very large hatchery, so they do a lot of fish. We're the second largest hatchery. So we try and fill in gaps where Spees can't with big, big lots of uh, big stocks, like some of the bigger reservoirs. And then the other hatcheries will stock some of the smaller bodies of water that they can raise enough fish to do that. First thing in the morning, we come in and we feed. Then we give the fish about 15, 20 minutes to digest their food, have a little pre-day meeting to discuss what we're gonna do that day. And then we'll come back out and we clean the raceways. There's up to 36 raceways. So we don't clean every one every day. That would be stressful on the fish. Each raceway gets cleaned twice a week. Everyone likes a nice clean place to live and the fish are no different. Then we're done, we got time for our other duties, which include if we have to thin fish, these empty raceways, we'll uh, clean them, get them ready for the next bunch of fish coming out. Each lot we have to inventory a few times a year to make sure we got the numbers that we think we have. So we're open uh, seven days a week. 365 days a year. So anywhere where we stock fish, you can find that on the website, on the Wyoming Game Fish website. Hope to see you at the Clark's Fork Fish Hatchery. Come around sometime and see us. You'd be surprised at the scenery right here. We have the Beartooth Mountains to our, just within sight of us.